Hello, I'm John White. This month's mailbag, Jim from Doniana writes that he has a lot of leaves that are beginning to brown on some of his shade trees and uh, wants to know what might be the possible cause of that browning. And Jim, with a lot of our uh, ornamental and fruit trees, we are starting to see a lot of uh, different degrees of uh, senescence as we're going into the cooler part of the year. Uh, trees are beginning to shut down some of their um, processes in the tree and we, we see a lot of things happening. This is a, a chitalpa leaf and uh, these have been showing some uh, leaf spotting on it for uh, probably the last couple months. Uh, this is probably a little bit drought related. Uh, as we're going into the fall, uh, they'll begin to yellow a little bit more and probably start to fall off the tree. But um, what some of these are telling us is that they went through some water stress this year. And uh, in my job, a lot of the problems I see are water stress. Here's an oak leaf that's, uh, again, showing some, some stress just over the season. A lot of times the mineral salts that a lot of these plants pick up uh, concentrate in the leaves. And then as the water is transpired off, uh, the salts are left behind and they begin to accumulate higher accumulations of salt uh, over the year. And uh, they will cause some uh, some damage to the leaf. Here's a, a sycamore leaf. You can see it has some uh, damage on it. So again, this time of year, we're going to be seeing a lot of, of uh, damage. Here's a, a, a redbud leaf. Again, some browning on it. If this is happening all over the tree, then there is a sign that the plant may not be getting enough uh, water over the season. There's something happening. Um, Here's a leaf off of a um, um, golden rain tree, and we can see that it's getting a little bit of burn on the edges. That's probably, again, accumulation of salt. The overall uh, change in color is that it's uh, showing some lack of nutrient in it. But again, this time of year, that's probably just the tree beginning to shut down. If uh, some of the other trees in the area aren't doing that, then that might be a sign that it's a little nutrient short, hadn't been fertilized good over the year. Our um, crepe myrtles here in the southern part of the state, uh, a lot of leaf tip browning is very common on the crepe myrtle. And uh, again, more water out away from the trunk of the tree so that you're hitting the whole root system is important. So uh, you want to make sure that those do get a, a good watering on it. So. Uh, we see that on a lot of the leaves. Uh, we also have a uh, question from Natalie, and this is from El Paso. And she was asking about what is the plant that's around the El Paso, Las Cruces area that has a lot of uh, purple coloring on it. It's a uh, grass. And uh, what Natalie is probably seeing is this plant right here, which is called Regal Mist in the trade. It's also uh, has some other names for it, but uh, it's a Muhlenbergia, and if you put something white behind the back of it, you can see how the, the pink color comes through. And when these are planted in mass and they're all in bloom, uh, you just have kind of a pink cast to them. They are very, very uh, colorful and a very, very good ornamental grass to use. So uh, I do um, encourage the use of ornamental grasses in this one in particular because it does give you such great uh, fall color. There are some other uh, ornamental grasses that can be used in your gardens, and this is a good time to plant them. Um, you know, check with your local nurseries as to which ones they might recommend, but uh, deer grass, and there's several of the different muleys that work very good. So, uh, but this is the one that's in bloom right now, so when you see some of the large industrial commercial plantings, you'll see that pink bloom on it, and that's one of the things that's probably uh, in that landscape. And then finally, we have a question from Joan in Las Cruces about uh, what would you recommend as a method of frost protection for some of our tender um, annuals and perennials in the garden. And uh, if your plants are not real, real cold tolerant, uh, one of the things that I really recommend is the use of a frost blanket. And the frost blanket is basically a very um, lightly spun uh, polyester material that's very thin, it's very lightweight, and uh, so it doesn't crush the plant. You can see that you can see through it. You will get some air movement through it. If you water it, water will move through it. 
but when it's placed over the top of a plant, when you unfold this out and put it over a plant, it does give you about five to seven degrees protection. So if your plant is kind of, uh, you know, marginal cold hardy in the area, uh, putting a frost blanket over on some of the real cold uh, mornings and nights will keep that plant going. So again, where you site it in the landscape is important because microclimates can have a lot of effect, but this material is good for vegetables as well as annuals and perennials. So hopefully those are giving you some ideas and maybe some of our viewers have uh, similar type questions. So hopefully that has helped.